Matthew chapter 2, in verses 1 through 12, another part of the Christmas story. The Bible says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them whose, where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is written by the prophet, And now Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not thou uh, least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he was sent with them, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And this, lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary's mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed in their own country another way. Let's bow for prayer. Fathers, we open up this familiar story, the Christmas story. It's one we've heard again and again. It's one we've read many Christmases. But yet, Lord, may it never become old. May the story be new and fresh every time we read it as we think about the precious gift of your son, Jesus Christ, being born in a manger just so he could die on the cross for us. And may we understand that present that you gave to us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you're like me, you like to receive presents at Christmas time. And, and so I want to talk about receiving presents today. I'd like to ask all the children to help me out by sitting up straight and listening carefully. And we'll get through this quickly. And then we'll have our time to present our gifts to Jesus as well. But when you say the word present, there's three different definitions to the word that we can apply. And the first, of course, is getting a present at Christmas, like the present right up here, to have a, a gift. And, uh, and God gave us a very precious gift, and that's the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. Now, when he gave that gift, just like you do, he wrapped that gift. It says in Luke chapter 2 and verse number 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in an inn. Now, how many of you are very meticulous and careful wrappers? You like to wrap everything just perfectly and put the ribbon around it and just have, you want to make your present beautiful on the outside with the wrapping. How many are that way? Raise your hand and put your hand up. All right. And how many of you are like me? As long as the wrapping paper covers most of the present and a lot of scotch tape, it's good. How many are that way? You're like me. All right. I think that's the majority. Uh, you know, I have a family that wraps presents really nice. My wife does a good job with that. I have daughters that do a good job with that. In fact, when uh, my kids were, were younger and still home, their job was to wrap all my presents for me. The night before Christmas, I'd say, here, go wrap everything. And uh, they would wrap all the presents for me because they were really good at it. I like wrap presents that wrap nice and wrap pretty. But the truth is, it doesn't last long because I don't want the wrapping. I want what's inside. It's what's inside that's more important than the wrapping on the outside. And, that, and God understood that when he sent his son, Jesus. He wasn't worried how he was wrapped. He was worried more about the gift that he gave to us. He gave us the gift of salvation. In John chapter 3 and verse number 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And God gave us the gift of his son. He gave us the gift of salvation because he loved us. Now, it's not because we deserve that love. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, but God commended or showed his love towards us and while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Most of us, when we go out and buy gifts, I know there's certain obligation gifts you have to give, whether it's to your boss or a coworker or somebody that gave you a gift. But most of the time, when we go out and buy a gift, we buy one because we love that person that we're buying the gift for. And God loved us. But you see, we didn't deserve that love. The Bible says we were yet sinners and Christ died for us. And he loved us even though we were sinners. And when God gave us that gift, he gave us a very special gift. Now, I have a, a gift here today as well. Right over here. Let me grab it. 
And uh, I used this this morning, an illustration with a gift, so I thought, well, I'll do it again tonight. Uh, I'm going to give a gift away to somebody. I've got one right here. And when I got the box earlier in the uh, evening, I, I got out of the Welcome Center where I was at, and, and Mrs. Sears was in there, and she saw it. She said, well, well, I'll take the gift. And so I'm going to give it to Mrs. Sears. She helps us out with the decoration, does all these things. So Mrs. Sears, you go ahead and come on up here, and I'm going to give you this gift. It, it's, it's out of the goodness of my heart that I'm going to give you this gift, all right? So here you are. Here's your gift, and go ahead and open it, and uh, let everybody know what's inside of there. No, that's going to jump out at you. All right, there you are. So, see, what do you got inside there? She's got a gift full of trash here, all right? I got some uh, candy wrappers and some Kleenex and, uh, and different kinds of trash. But you know what? There's some candy in there. You want the candy? You don't want the candy. But the box is so pretty. Isn't that wrapped nice? Isn't that pretty? Yeah, but you don't want it. You see, you can keep it. But anyway, <laughs> a box full of garbage wrapped up pretty is still garbage. A box full of garbage wrapped up pretty is still garbage. And we can wrap our lives up in our righteousness, in our good works. But it's still garbage on the inside. It's still sin. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, then not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We can wrap up our life in religion, but we're still sinners. We can wrap up our life in rituals like baptism and catechism and church membership, but we're still sinners on the inside. We can wrap up our lives in, in our righteousness, but the Bible says it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, because good works on the outside doesn't change the sin, the garbage on the inside. And, and so we cannot just wrap up our lives in our good works. We've got to rip off our righteousness. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 9, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the, through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. You see, we've got to understand, you've got to rip off your righteousness. How, how many of you are rippers when you open the present? You know, there's some people there carefully pulling the tape. How many are rippers and you just rip the wrapping right off? Uh, because you want to get what's on the inside. And you have to rip off your own righteousness because it's Christ on the inside that is going to change your life. And so we need to rip off our righteousness because it's not by works of righteousness. But we need to make sure we get the gift that's on the inside. Have you ever lost a gift in your wrapping? I remember one year we had a lot of gifts and we had all kinds of things. We were ripping wrapping paper off and throwing it over here, ripping wrapping paper off and throwing it over there. Afterwards, we had this big pile of wrapping paper and ribbons and all this stuff. And, and I gathered them all up and put them in a trash bag and took it out to the trash. And, and about a day or two later, we said, well, where's this present? Well, we figured out that present was in with the wrapping paper. And it, it got mixed in with all the garbage and hauled out in the trash and lost. You know what? Sometimes we can lose the precious gift of Jesus in all the wrappings of life. And we need to realize that you don't want to lose that gift. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 3 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which is the first began to be spoken by the Lord was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. And folks, don't miss what Christmas is all about. Don't miss the gift of Christmas. Don't lose it in all that's going on with the Christmas season. Realize the greatest gift of Christmas is the gift of Jesus. And don't lose that gift. Don't neglect that gift. Make sure you've accepted that gift of salvation. You've accepted the gift of Jesus Christ. You know, again, on Sunday morning, when you uh, get up to open your presents, there are going to be presents under that tree with everybody's name on them. And I can pretty well guarantee unless somebody is away or somebody is gone that day and sometimes we have fellows that are deployed or sometimes we have people that are not able to be there, they're working on the day of Christmas and so maybe it's the next day. But, but I can guarantee you by uh, if you open your presents in the morning, by the, by the afternoon, there's not going to be a present left out of that tree, tree that's not been received. I can guarantee your kids are going to say, that was mine, and that was mine, and that was mine. And they're going to receive them, and they're going to open those gifts up. And, and, and you need to receive the gift of salvation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, in verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you're here today and you've never received God's gift of salvation, 
If you've never accepted his gift, you know, on, on Christmas morning, I, I sit in a chair, chair by the tree and I'll pick up a box and I'll say, well, this one is for, and I'll name off one of our family members. And they say, that's mine. And they immediately accept and receive that gift. And you need to do the same thing with the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you accepted his gift of salvation? Have you accepted him as your personal savior? Because you can wrap yourself up in your righteousness, your religion, and your rituals. But it's still garbage on the inside. It's still sin. And the only one that can forgive that sin and take away the sin is to invite Jesus Christ to come in and receive God's gift of salvation. But look at Matthew chapter 2 and look at verse number 11. It says, And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. The Bible says they presented unto him gifts. In Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God has given to us the gift of salvation. And now we need to give him a present as well. The wise men, they presented their gifts to the Lord. The word present here means to bring to, to bring to. If you'll turn back one book to the book of Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3 and verses 8 through 10. Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. It says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this the whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You see, we give to God not in order to receive from him, but because he loved us. Because he already gave to us. Just about every year, my wife will say something to me, well, why don't we not give gifts to each other? Now, I'm teaching a marriage class on Wednesday night. Fellas, understand me. When your wife says, don't give me a gift, she's lying. <laughs> do not believe her. Do not do what she says. Go out and get her a gift anyways. Why? Because you love her. Because you love her. You don't have to give her a gift to make her love you. But because she loves you, and because you love her, you want to bring your gift to her. And that's what we do with Jesus. Tonight we're having gifts for Jesus. It's just an opportunity for us to remember that this is his birthday. How would you like to celebrate your birthday? Everybody else gets gifts and you don't get any. And we need to give the Lord. Bring our gifts to him. But in Romans chapter 12, where it says to present your bodies a living sacrifice, the word present there is a different word. It means to stand beside, to stand beside. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, look at verses 1 through 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 5, it says, Moreover, brethren, we do to wit of the grace of God bestowed in the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship, the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, not to us by the will of God. You see, it's not just bringing a gift to Jesus to give him something. It's more important to come and stand beside him, to give yourself to the Lord as a living sacrifice, to present yourself to him. And today, as we think about giving gifts at Christmas, take time to give yourself to the Lord. When you, when you wrap up your gift, you always put a little bow on the outside. At least that's what my wife tells me we're supposed to do. And when you put that bow on there, it just makes it look a little bit nicer. And it says in Matthew chapter 2 and verse number 2, the Bible tells us, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we've seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. In verse 11, it says, When they were come unto the house, they saw the young child with Mary's mother and fell down and worshipped him. And I hope that you will put a bow or a bow on your gift to the Lord. And I hope that this Christmas season you will take time to worship the Lord and bow before him 
and thank him for his wonderful gift. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 10, or verse chapter 2 and verse 10, it says that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things onto the earth. And I think this is a good start, time to start bowing to the Lord as at Christmas to thank him for his gift to us as well. But the word present not only means a gift, but the word present can mean to be present. You know, and so when you take role in a classroom, uh, the child will call off their name and say, present, I I'm here, I I'm here. You know, most of you know my testimony. My dad, mom and dad were divorced. My dad was an alcoholic and very abusive. But uh, even after he left, he left us when I was about seven years old. And I remember every Christmas after that, even though I didn't see my dad very much at all, every Christmas I got a present from my dad. Found out later that most of the time it was a present my mom had bought and put my dad's name on there because she didn't want me to be disappointed. But you know, no matter what present he gave me, what I wanted more was his presence. It didn't matter what present was in the wrapping paper. It was a disappointment every year that my dad didn't think it was important to be present with me at Christmas. And folks, the greatest present that we can give the Lord is our presence, is to be there. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, it says, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Wise men still seek the Lord. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search me with all your heart. As far as Bible scholars understand, the journey of those wise men was probably about two to three years before they got to Jerusalem. It was a long, hard journey. It wasn't by bus. It wasn't by train. It wasn't by plane. It was by camelback. It wasn't easy to get there. You know, sometimes it's not easy to get to church. Sometimes it's not easy to find time to read your Bible. Sometimes it's not easy to find time to pray. But the greatest gift you can give to the Lord Jesus is to give him the gift of your presence. In Matthew chapter 2, it says, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? In Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Is Jesus Christ the king of your life? In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 9, God asks Adam and Eve, where art thou? Where are you at right now? And sometimes we need to determine where we're at in order to know where we're going. Somebody said, well, why do they call them wise men? And one wife says, because they ask for directions. Because men don't like to do that very often, do they? We like to think we know, we know the way to go. We're never lost. And we need to sometimes ask for directions. Sometimes we need to be willing to say, God, I, I need direction in my life right now. I need direction in my family. I need direction of what you want me to do. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 33, verse 13, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now the way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. So tonight maybe you need to ask God for directions back to him to find the kingdom of God in your life. In order to do that, we need a guiding light. When the star disappeared, the wise men didn't know where to go. In 2 Peter chapter 1, um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day star arise, the dawn, day dawn and day star arise in your hearts. See, folks, we have a guiding light. It's called the word of God. And the Word of God can guide you as an individual, as a couple, as a family. It can guide you in the way that you need to go. In Psalms 119, verse 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. One of the greatest presents, if you've got little boys, I'll tell you a great present to give to them is a flashlight. Boys just like flashlights. And I remember one year I gave my boys a flashlight, and that was one of the greatest presents they received. Well, we have the light of God's Word to guide us through life. It'll guide us to get to the right place. In Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11, it says, And when they were come into the house. You know, we all have the little manger scenes in our home, the little models of the manger, and they always have the, the wise men there, but they weren't there. They weren't at the stable. They were at the house. The child could have been up to two years old at this point. But they still found their way. And we need to make sure that we are at the right place in our life right now. If they'd gone to stable, the baby Jesus wasn't there anymore. 
using a house now. And you need to find the right place in your life to be in the right place right now spiritually. The present is a gift. And we need to receive the gift of salvation. And we need to give the God the gift of our presence to be in church, to read our Bible, to pray, to stand beside him. The present is to be here, present and accounted for. The greatest gift my dad could have given me was just to be there. And the greatest gift you can give to the Lord is to be there. But thirdly, a present means now. The present is right now. It's not tomorrow. It's not yesterday. It's right now. Go over to Psalms chapter 27. Psalms chapter 27. Verses 13 and 14. I think one of the hardest things to do at Christmas is to wait. I'm not a patient person. I'm not patient with receiving gifts, and I'm not patient with giving gifts. I usually wait till the last minute to buy a gift. And it's not just because I'm a procrastinator, although I am, but it's also because I can't wait to give it to my wife or to give it to my kids. Uh, we, we got a present for Joshua. It must have been about six or eight months ago now when Kmart was closing down. We went there to the, to the toy section, and we bought something for him. And I probably have said to my wife probably at least a dozen or more times, why don't we give it to him now? Why don't we give it to him now? And I wanted to give it to him all along. And if my wife hadn't stopped me, and if she hadn't hidden it somewhere where I can't find it, he would already have it. Because I want to do it right now. And when I go out and buy her gifts, I always give it to her before Christmas. Then I have to go buy another one. It's too expensive. So it's better just to wait till the last minute. But present is now. One of the hardest things to do is to wait. In Psalms chapter 27, verses 13 and 14, it says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I think one of the greatest lessons of the message I preached this morning about Simeon and Anna and Luke chapter 2 is that they had to wait so long for the Savior to come. Simeon was probably close to 100 years old, if not over that. And he waited all his life just to see the Savior. Anna had been a widow for many, many years, and she had waited to see the Savior. And sometimes the hardest thing to do is to wait on the Lord. In Matthew chapter 2 and verses 9 and 10, it says, when they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. They said, now we've got our way again. And sometimes it's hard to wait on the Lord, but we are always blessed when we do. We can always rejoice when God answers our need. Where you are now in your journey began yesterday. And where you are today will determine where you're going to be tomorrow. And so the most important thing we can do is to make sure we're where the Lord wants us to be in the present. I can't change yesterday. I wish I could. I can't do anything about tomorrow. Only the Lord is in control of that. But I can make sure that in the present, I'm where I need to be. And so this Christmas... Are you in the present where you need to be spiritually? If you're not saved, you need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior. If you're not spending time with the Lord as you ought to, you ought to give him the time to be in church, to pray, to read your Bible. If you've not given your life to God, then present yourself as a living sacrifice. We need to... Be in the present where God wants us to be. Because if I'm where I'm supposed to be today, then I'm ready to be where I need to be tomorrow. And I won't regret tomorrow what I did today. 